Um, in order of preference, that's quite a tough ask. I mean, the reason why I would probably put Richard Dunwoody first is because I grew up sort of thinking that Dunwoody was the hero. Um, AP was more of a hero, don't get me wrong, but I put AP, AP second. AP was more of a hero in terms of jockey and winners and things like that, but he was also, but he was during my training career, he rode winners for us, um, got beaten at the festival a couple of times for us. Um, but no, he's, he's obviously broken every record, but that's why I put Dunwoody first, then I'd have, um, then I'd have AP, then I'd have, um, I don't I think John Franken would hate me for having him last and skew in third, but John Franken, a local boy, I should have put him higher than third, from fourth, I mean, because he's a local boy from around here, from where I grew up as well. Um, and skew, I do remember him, my first ever job in racing was when he was stable jockey for, for Pipe, and he was also at Twist and Davis's the whole time as well, so I did, do, do remember his time then, just. But yeah, Dunwoody was my hero growing up. Best mate, quarter star, album photo. I would have album photo in last place because I don't think he was as good as the rest of me. He's a still a fantastic horse and probably going to win the Gold Cup again this year. Um, best mate and quarter star. Quarter star probably has has to be. You know, he was. I know he only won the Gold Cup twice. Um, best mate won it three times, but I think quarter star had a greater generation of horses around him, um, the likes of Denman um, and best mate. He was a true superstar, never got beaten, but I don't think he had to beat the similar quality opposition as, as Quarto Star. So Quarto Star, best mate, album photo. Well, Fred Winter, true icon of racing. My lot of my bosses used to work have worked for him in the past. Um, I would probably be controversial and put Martin Pipe in front because I think he changed the whole way we look at national hunt racing, the whole way the horses got fit. Um, you know, his, the way he dominated so much in the 90s, um, I might be wrong for those exact dates, but he was just different league. He created, I think the horses suddenly became fitter and, um, and he just, what he did was absolutely fantastic. So I, I would put Martin Pipe first. Then, I'll be loyal to my ex-boss, Nicky Henderson. True hero, hasn't won as many titles as Paul Nichols, um, but the way he's dealt with some of his superstars, like the Sprinter Sacras um, of this world, Altiors, um, has been unbelievable. And I worked for him for five years, and I think that's only fair that he, controversially, may have to go above Paul Nichols in third, who again, equally multiple champion trainer, True legend. Again, he's, 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 I think he's taken jump racing another step on from what Martin Pipe did. Um, his thing for detail and things like that is second to none. But look, he will be third. And Fred Winter, only because I didn't know him, and I, I know my old head lad, Corky Brown from Henderson's, would absolutely kill me for saying this. I'll put him in fourth because he, he was a different generation to me. I go Grand National, um, I think it is the most famous race in the world, seen by millions and millions of people every year. Um, yes, the Gold Cup is the blue ribbon event and we all want to win that, the best horse wins the Gold Cup, but Grand National is the most iconic race. And I feel hopefully we might have a bit more of a chance of winning that.